You guys like my upload schedule? Nihon Wasugoku Tano Shikata! So I promised a video on stage control a little while ago, and feel like it's finally time to get that out there. So grab some popcorn, have a seat, and get ready to learn, fellas. Okay, let's start with the most simple and easy to explain part of this video. What is stage control? Well, stage control, similar to Bill Nye's claims about gender, runs on a spectrum. The closer you are to center stage, the better of a position you're in. As you branch out further away, your stage control gets worse. Being on platforms is also typically an inferior position to ground level. Got it? Great. Let's keep this vid rolling. A huge advantage of having stage control is that it allows winning interactions to become easier. Neutral sways more in your favor. To demonstrate my points on this channel, I give so many in-game examples, so let's mix it up with one from the real world this time. Say you're on a pirate ship and were just caught watching anime. The logical punishment would obviously be to walk the plank and die to the sharks. You get on that thing and, as you back up, decide that you can change and that you'll start watching cool, quirky shows like The Office from now on. So you attempt to walk back. Unfortunately, the pirate on deck sees you do this and easily destroys your attempt to get on board again. This is due to his superior positioning. He shoves you overboard and you're devoured by sea life. Same rules apply to Smash. You want to be the pirate on the ship, not the guy who's on the plank. It's easier to chill out and work with your advantage state than to try and fix a sticky situation. Now, when you do eventually obtain the precious stage control, it's absolutely essential to keep a hold on it for as long as possible. Don't worry, we'll get into that later in the video. But first, how do you obtain stage control? The process of gaining and losing stage control can happen super fast and subtly. Something as simple as a well-timed roll can suddenly move one guy from the bad side of the stage to being in control of the match. One projectile landing can force the opponent into a bad situation and switch the role of who's in advantage, etc, etc. The first step to obtain stage control is to acknowledge that you don't have it. You're gonna be starting from either a neutral position or a disadvantage one. Now neutral is definitely easier to deal with than negative, but either one is doable. So the simplest way to get stage control is to hit the opponent. Now how you get that initial hit pertains to the complex topic of neutral, which is impossible to explain in a single video despite what some channels teach you to believe. But one thought process that might be good to consider is, what move do I have that's most likely to hit? This question is broad and the answer can vary depending on several things like the character you're playing, the opponent's character, how the opponent's playing and what moves you have to counter their playstyle, the list goes on. But it's a solid mindset to have because it gets you to focus on one simple task instead of looking at the entire game like it's an alien brain surgery. After getting an initial hit, you can then turn it into something bigger by following up with a combo or abusing your newly gained stage control. Unless you're living in some alternate universe, landing something like a young link arrow shouldn't be that hard compared to hitting like a forward smash. So let's say that a stray arrow does hit the opponent. That hit will give you at least a little bit of stage, which can convert into more hits, more damage, and more stocks. Now the game does have a lot more complexity to it than just this simple thought process. One thing to look out for is not focusing so hard on getting a hit that you play with absolutely zero awareness and end up acting like a brain dead glue eater because of it. Still, it's something to keep in mind if you find yourself fishing for like obscure unrealistic combo starters that you see on Twitter for example. Come on falling Bowser up air. Besides that, it is possible to get stage control without hitting someone first. Simply moving into the right position can get the job done real fast. How you go about getting to this position can be done in a plethora of ways, including rolls, jumps, or simply moving. My best advice for moving to the right place is to be as safe and unpredictable as possible. Don't roll when it's super obvious or get off the ledge at the same time every time. This is especially true in disadvantage since many good players scout these kinds of options consistently. It's best to use your regular movement whenever possible instead of messy movement options like rolls or air dodges. Despite what any lifeguard will tell you, running is usually pretty safe, and you're given a lot of freedom to do things after it. So if you struggle getting stage control back, consider that you might be using options like rolls and stuff a bit too much and that it's really just making your position worse in the long run. Despite everything I've said, if you're playing against someone around your same skill level, you're gonna have stage control for a pretty decent part of the match. You want to usually be practicing against these players anyway, so the rest of this video will be focused on abusing stage control once you get it. Trust me, this is going to net you a ton of extra damage if you do it right. So you're closer to the middle than your opponent. Now you probably can't keep it this way forever, but your goal is to shoot for as long as possible. In this position, you're gonna want to consider two things. Should I play passive or aggressive? In my opinion, neither is necessarily better, but they both have their strengths and weaknesses and work together very well. A shining example of passive play is standing just outside of your opponent's range and pressuring with safe hitboxes. Every character has a limited reach for most of their moves. Mario's is quite small, so you don't have to stand that far away from him to pressure. But many sorties have 
have pretty large ranges that take up this stage and a half, so you'll usually want to stand a bit further away from them. The reason this is so good is because it forces the opponent to commit to something. They'll have to get closer to you, throw a dash attack out, roll in, jump in, etc. Now all these options can work if the opponent makes the right call, but almost anything they do is punishable if you anticipate it. Again, the opponent is the one who has to initiate in this scenario. They're the one who has to do all the work and make a good play. And as you chill out, relaxing in this situation, the most you have to do is predict. This can be done in multiple ways. You can go off what most players at their level usually do, what that specific player has been doing repeatedly, what their character is most likely to do, the list goes on. A few footnotes about ranges. Projectiles can obviously go pretty far compared to most other normal moves, but you don't necessarily need to outrange them. Just as long as you have enough space to react to one and avoid it when it's used, you'll be fine. Next, Snake's dash attack is probably one of the dumbest moves in the game in terms of size. People will use it as a surprise attack against people who outrange them all the time. I can't really give you much advice for how to deal with this cool move, other than to just expect and or bait it. Maybe try outranging everything he has but dash attack, and then as soon as he looks like he's gonna go for it, put up that shield. Another method for holding onto stage control that I find super useful is standing right where the opponent wants to be. Many players will try to get to one specific location and will often mix up how they get there, but they'll only mix up the option used to get to that location, not where the location is. Because of this, you can usually react to whatever option they use to get there and cover a bunch of stuff at once. These are both super efficient tactics, but combined with a few aggressive callouts sprinkled here and there, they can become broken. For example, if the opponent's in the corner, you might want to give up a bit of your stage to pressure them in that terrible position. Don't get me wrong, you definitely don't have to corner pressure all the time, and it can be better to just stay back every now and then, but it's amazing when used sparingly. It's especially good if you're confident in what the opponent's gonna do. Like if they're a pretty jumpy player in your gut, or a crowd member, is telling you they're gonna jump. There are a few more good callouts that can be super helpful if you make them an advantage. Reading the right tech option, predicting a double jump, or running up and confidently grabbing all can get the opponent feeling super spooked. These plays are risky though. If you try to cover a tech roll away and they roll in, in, your stage control will be gone in an instant. That's why it's best to do this kind of thing sparingly. If the opponent's used to your more passive play, they might start to focus exclusively on how to get back in. They'll forget about the bad habits and patterns they've used throughout the match because you haven't been punishing them. Take this opportunity and use it to your advantage when the time's right. Inevitably, you will make mistakes and lose stage control at points throughout the match. Heck, sometimes it won't even be a mistake, but rather a good play on the opponent's part. Don't get discouraged in these situations. It's only natural. Just resume playing neutral and do your best the next time you're an advantage. There's one more thing I want to touch on before I end the video. Punishing rolls. So many opponents will use rolls in an attempt to get stage control back. Don't let anybody get away with this. Rolls are 100% reactable, and many characters have quick moves that can punish them before the opponent's even able to do something else. As a Yoshi player, I always make sure to punish them with a nair out of shield if I'm in range. Plenty of other characters have similarly quick options out of shield. Oh, and tons of people do the same thing after rolling every single time. I've found grab, shield, and jab the most common in that order. So if you can't punish roll, maybe look out for these instead. And that's it. Abusing stage control, passively or aggressively, is bound to get you tons of friends and make you the most popular kid in class. And who doesn't want that? Anyway, hopefully my next video doesn't take a good year to come out like this one did. I'm done traveling for the time being, so let's see how life goes from here. Okay, bye.